Next up is a Pioneer SX 3800. Uh, this came actually in the box. A um, couple of things to know about the SX 3800. And if you are thinking about tackling one of these or have come across one of these or have one of these, um, X-Ray Tony B has a really good series on the 3900 that I would encourage you to check out. One thing, well, there are several things you need to know about this particular receiver, the 3800 and the 3900. They're not beginner receivers, not at all. Um, before you even think about powering one of these on, uh, you need to do a visual inspection of the inside. I'm going to go over a couple of things that you need to watch out for. Now, I have a 3900 that I bought that was dead off of eBay, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into, and it was pretty frustrating to go through it. It was a great learning experience, but uh, lots of gotchas in here. Uh, it, the things you need to do are in places, locations that are difficult to get to. You have to disassemble almost everything on this. You know, if you want to get to the power supply, it's it's dug in like a tick. If you want to get to the amp board, you know, it looks like it's easy to get to, and it, and it is to a certain extent, but if you have to, like, do a recap, you almost have to pull the, pull the whole thing apart. So, anyway, just a quick... Uh, Inspection of the outside, these these switches are all bent. You know, to straighten those out, you have to be really, really careful. You don't want to break anything. So, switches are bent. It's sturdy. I mean, I don't see any buttons missing. Mine had one of the speaker buttons missing. Right. So, lots of opportunities to clean this up. Not sure about, uh, again, I haven't powered this on, so I'm not sure about operational status. Definitely before you power this on you need to open it up and look at the inside So we're going to do that next I'm going to kind of go over a couple of things that you need to look out for before you even think about applying power to this Now had this been shipped to me um, you know, opening it opening it up is uh, a given, right? If it's if it's shipped to you, because you want to make sure nothing is rattled loose in transit. Now, this was a local purchase. Uh, you can see it has the kind of the normal dust and dirt. Now, the previous owner said this was repaired. I don't know what the extent of the repairs was. Um, so, on top here, I'm looking for my little my dowel. So. Issues with these amplifiers or these uh, receivers on the amp board, you know, these pots are known to go bad. Um, so any of these are variable resistors, right? These are, are known to uh, have issues from time to time. You'll notice there are some transistors on the board with fat middle legs, right? So... On the amp board, these transistors with the fat middle legs, they're known or prone to have cracks around those legs, right? So you get a little bit of a solder, a solder crack or solder joint crack, you know, a, a cold solder, and it will cause this to go in and out of protection. It will take, you know, diodes and resistors with it. Now, this has the originals installed. Because I was kind of wondering if that was what was repaired in the 90s, is what the uh, original owner said. So before I power this on, I will remove these screws, kind of bend the board this way a little bit, and just see if I notice any cracks. I mean, the, the best way to do that is to remove the board, but um, you know, I just want to do kind of a, a, an initial inspection that I'm going to blow this out to power supply is I think it's oh maybe it's the 3900 I know there's a board buried underneath here this looks like the power supply board protection relay filter caps there's a board buried underneath here um, so anyway looks this all looks easy to get to but if you have to to replace components on the bottom of this board you've got to pull 
the screws out of here. My my 3900 has a big bracket that goes across. Then you disassemble the bottom. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is flip this over and kind of show you what to look for underneath. So here's the bottom. All right, so the second issue. Now, this is different from my 3900 in that my 3900 has um, eight of these clips, but these plastic clips are known to develop cracks and they short the output transistors. So um, but you know these look different than the ones in my 3900. The ones in my 3900 were more opaque or, or clear like these. Uh, it was the same mounting mechanism but I don't remember them being kind of solid like this. So, so anyway, you have to check these for cracks or just replace them. Right? And they look like this. Yeah, the, I don't think these are. I don't think these are the same as the ones that were on my thirty-nine hundred. It's another hot day here in Nebraska, so I'll be shooting videos in my garage when it's. 105 and negative 5 throughout the year. Luckily, I have a heater in the garage. I just have a fan for when it's hot like this. But So anyway, um, so I don't know if those, I don't think those were replaced. Those might be original. I honestly, I honestly don't know. And these have real goofy output transistors that, uh, that they don't make anymore. Uh, what I'm going to do next is, so kind of just, I looked at these, that's what I wanted to check out on this, see what was going on with those. I know I didn't look at them real close, but those appear to be different than my other ones. I thought I had an old one. If I find it, I'll kind of show you what the other one looks like. But I think I'm going to uh, attach the bottom or reattach the bottom, at least a couple of the screws, and then we'll put it on the dim bulb tester and see what happens. Killed off some of the dust bunnies. Blew this out so we can get a better look at this board. Uh, before I do power it on, I want to uh, just flex this board back, at least see. Because, let's see, this transistor here and this transistor here are the ones that I'm most concerned with in terms of that solder joint. Just my mic here. All right. So I know I'm not going to be able to get this in the camera frame, but I need to find my flashlight. I need to look at this joint. Oh, here it is. And, yep, that one right there has a crack in it. So, no, it looks like a crack. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, yes. Yep, there's a little tiny crack in like a ring. Sorry, I can get my head out of there. And on this side. Uh, there, uh, yeah, maybe there might be a crack in that one as well. So I'm going to heat up the soldering iron. 
and I'm going to just hit those and I believe those are the two of uh, primary concern the ones with the fat middle legs I'd have to open up the schematic tell you which transistor transistors they are but just better safe than sorry on this before I fire it up. Um, according to the owner, this has not been powered on for quite a few years. Cool thing is I can hit all of those, the solder joints and all those. It looks like that one, this one may have been worked on before. This one does not appear that it's been worked on. So you can see a little bit of Maybe. Maybe somebody touched that up once before. Can't really tell. Again, that's as far as I can get this board to flex without removing the heat sink and pulling stuff out of the bottom. And yeah, it's kind of difficult. So anyway, I'm going to touch those solder joints up real quick and then we'll fire it up and see what happens. And those were touched up. For some reason, my soldering iron is uh, taking a little bit to warm up. So let me reattach these two screws. And we'll put it on the dim bulb tester. Let's see what happens. Check for DC offset, even though it's got a protection relay. Make sure it's not high. All right, so this is off. Moment of truth. Let's see what happens. All right, so I should power this on after six seconds or so we should hear the protection relay click and it's got a bright glowing bulb on the dim bulb tester so we have it short oh wait you know what uh let me take it back so this one this bulb is probably too small Much better. There's a relay click. Got a 75 watt bulb in here. This is a 60 watt, I think 60 or 65 watt receiver. Uh, all right, so let's kind of see what we got. Now, I'm going to check for DC offset. This button's broken. Speaker button light for A does not work. Center of all these. It's on phono. So let's see. There's FM. There's AM. That seems to work. Let's test for. Uh, I know you can't see that. Alright. I can do this without getting in the way. So this is on speaker A.
60, 60 moments. Oh, that's AC. I don't use the fluke very often for this, so. Yeah, 60 moments. So that's high. Another channel with the right. But it's not so high that I won't connect the uh, test speakers to it, so you get that set up and we'll power it on and see if we have sound, see what kind of sound we have. Alright, so I'll put the test speakers up, volumes down, power on, relay click. I don't have an antenna hooked up to this, so let's see if I can get one of our uh, let me make sure muting is off. Muting off, all right. Oh my button doesn't work either. Alright, hold on, let me hook an antenna up to this. The camera position was Kind of getting in my way, so let's. Uh... Okay, so I've uh, attached the FM antenna, so now we've got good signal. Relay click. And what I'm curious about. Kind of scratchiness in the pots. You're stuck in this what's going on, you know, some some simple desire, habit or whatever. Else, and go to him and just keep doing it with all your heart, mind. Now hands on the wheel. Okay. Gosh, all sorts of lights out on this. Ugh. Those are not. If I remember right, these are a pain to change out. So. And I'm going to clean the pots anyway. I just uh, wanted to get a real quick function test. What I'll do off the camera is I'll test the other inputs as well just to make sure they're working. And uh, what I normally do is make a little, take my notepad, make a note of kind of what's going on with this receiver. And then that way I have a kind of a running list of things that I need to address. So, so I'm going to check all the other inputs and then I'll kind of share with you what I found out and I think what we'll do next is adjust uh, DC offset and bias make sure we can adjust those got to be real careful on this one when you adjust them it's really touchy and I've got to take it off of the dim bulb tester to do that uh, but we'll get into the service manual we'll make that adjustment and then talk about uh, what else we're going to do with this. so here are the instructions for DC offset and bias. I'm um, sorry, my mic is tangled. Gosh, such a problem with these mics. So this one's kind of different. You, I mean, setting DC offset first is kind of standard. But what's strange is you end up adjusting uh, the idle current using two different readings on the same pins but different adjustment pots. Right. So, so anyway, let's uh, jump into this and get this set up. We're going to first test on pin 22 and 23 for zero volts DC. So I'm going to go in underneath here. And
Uh, I think I need to get these from the top. Actually, I think I can change my lead and get them from underneath. I have to do this with two hands. Oops. I know. Sorry. I wasn't paying attention. All right. So, get that into position there. Turn that on. Something happened. That happened. Something just smoked. And my lead was not touching anything metal. It was just touching the test point. Oh, no, we got a resistor. Oh, man, that was weird. We have a resistor on this side smoking for some reason. That's not good. That is not good at all. <sighs> oh, what? Is that? There's a... Oh, what is that? There's like a... Oh, that's part of that resistor. Oh, here we got a burned up resistor right there. I see it right there. Well, I'm not going to power this up anymore, but what I suspect happened was when I turned these pots into the position per the service manual, so these were supposed to be fully counterclockwise. These are middle positions. Remember I said that there was high DC offset on that one channel. I wonder if one of these is bad and caused that resistor to burn up. Because the, the way I had the probe in there, if you look underneath, I wasn't touching any metal because the way the probe sits, the way the probe sits in this groove, there's no metal to touch. It was just kind of sitting like that. In fact, if it's touching the metal of the lead, you can't touch any, any other piece of metal. So. So one of two things happened, either flexing the board a little bit, uh, maybe caused a solder that was something that was bad to break or crack, or I think most likely moving those pots caused that problem. So I'm gonna have to review the video and see what happened on the voltmeter as I did that. But it looks like we have a repair now that we've got to embark on. Probably just end up recapping. So as I pulled the camera away, I, I went and reviewed the footage. I was getting 26 volts on that pin. And it's supposed to be set for zero. So I'm thinking one of these pots are bad. Well, anyway, now this is going to be a long repair video on this. So, and I just I went through this whole thing with my 3900. My 3900 came to me bad. This one, I should have just 
well, I don't know. That was, uh, it was high to begin with on that channel, but whatever. Just what happens sometimes. Oh, and here's the inventory of what needs to be addressed on this. Speaker A, FM auxiliary lamps, and then the bright and the dim switch is broken, as is the uh, FM muting switch. All right. Okay, so, um, yep, I'm going to tear the board out. I'm going to have to disassemble this thing after all. Get to those variable resistors and probably rebuild that amp board.